What's up everybody? In this video, I'm gonna go over this NASDAQ trade that I just took. I am going to go over in depth, in full detail. I will not leave anything out. I will show you every step of my model and what I use to trade on a daily basis. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so here's the NASDAQ 100 chart. We are looking at the one minute chart. This green shaded area, this is the PM session, which is 1.30 to 3.45. And then this pink shaded area, this is the end of the AM session, 11.30. And then the time in between that is the lunch hour. So what made me take this trade? Before I get into that, I wanna show you guys the execution arrow. So the blue arrow, I got in at this candle at 18,013. And I got out at the red arrow at 18,036 and a quarter. I can't put these arrows on the chart. This is done by TradingView when you enter a trade through your broker. Full disclosure, this trade was taken in a paper trading account. It was not taken in a live account. So full disclosure, it was in a paper traded account. So let's get into why I took this trade. So you can see that we had AM session lows here. We had London session lows here. And if I zoom out, we had this low here, which was the low that we created on Sunday because we open up at 5 p.m. on Sunday, 6 p.m. My bad on Sunday. And this is the low that it created. So if I mark that low out right here, let's make that blue. So you can see we have this low here and we have not come down into it here during the p.m. session. But if I go to the E mini S&P chart. So here I have the two charts side by side. The left side is the E mini S&P and the right side is the NASDAQ. And you can see we have this same low here around 137, 135 p.m. And if I go back to that Sunday low, so this is ES Sunday low, and then this is NASDAQ Sunday low. If I mark out that low, and let me make it a little bit thicker for you guys. So now I have it marked at Sunday's low and Sunday's low. If we go back to the p.m. session, we can see that it's running out that Sunday low, while NASDAQ isn't even close to it. If I zoom out, you can see Sunday's lows all the way down here. NASDAQ isn't even close to it. So that is a sign of SMT divergence and that we may start to trade the other way. So then once we see that SMT divergence, what's the next step in my model? So step one is SMT divergence. Step two would be some type of market structure shift or a change in the state of delivery. So what is a market structure shift? Basically, ES and NASDAQ would have to take out a high that is within a fair value gap and comes between 50%. So right here, I have this right here labeled, and you can see that 50% of this fair value gap is 5088.5. The high on this candle, if you look to the top up here, when I hover over it, you'll see the high. The high of that candle is 5088.5. So if we take out this high, that will be a shift in market structure. So after we take out the PM low, we trade up, we make equal highs, but we don't take out that high. So we don't have the shift in market structure yet. We trade down, then we go higher, finally taking out that high. So there goes your shift in market structure on the yes. Now if we go back to NASDAQ, where is its swing high that's within the fair value gap? Well, we have this fair value gap, but we have to make sure that it is within 50%. So this high does not count because it doesn't hit 50% of the fair value gap. Then we create this swing high within the fair value gap and it is clearly above the 50% line. So once we take that high out here, now we have the shift in market structure. So both runs, both bullish runs here on ES and NASDAQ create that shift in market structure. Now, once that shift in market structure happens, so that's step two. Step three is now we wait for an optimal trade entry or return back to equilibrium if there's some sort of balanced price range at equilibrium. If not, then we're waiting for a return to optimal trade entry. And there needs to be a fair value gap within either optimal trade entry or like I said, the balanced price range at equilibrium. So now if we look for step three, we have this swing low. And why am I picking this swing low and not this one from this run up? Well, if you look to the left, you can see that we run out this high right here. Let me make it a little bit thicker. We run out that high and then we run out this low here. 
So we run out buy side, run out sell side, and then go higher to run out buy side again. So these up close candles is a bullish breaker right here. Two consecutive up close candles. And they can be up to three consecutive candles. Why am I not picking this one? Because this isn't an up close candle. We close where we open that. So I'm not including this candle. So these two up close candles, that's a bullish breaker. And this swing low is outside of that bullish breaker. So I'm going to use this swing low to measure my range and look for that optimal trade entry. So now if I take my fib and I measure from high to low, and let me set that to my optimal trade entry preset, we can see that this black dotted line, that's equilibrium. And do we have any type of balanced price range? Basically, what I'm looking for is a fair value gap that ran through another fair value gap. So if you follow ICT concepts, basically what I'm looking for is a fair value gap within an inversion fair value gap. But you can see that this fair value gap, if we look to the left, there's no fair value gap in between it, right? So entering at equilibrium is not viable for this scenario. So now we have to enter an optimal trade entry and a fair value gap in that optimal trade entry range. Now we have optimal trade entry here from this orange dotted line down to this orange dotted line. So if I draw that out with a box, so I have my optimal trade entry set. I'm going to delete the breaker just to make it a little bit more clear for you guys. So I have my optimal trade entry range set. I have a fair value gap right here. So I want to enter right at this candles low where the fair value gap starts. So if I enter here, boom, my stop loss is going to go right below this low. And my target is a two to one target. So I'm going to raise that up to two to one right there. So right here, entry in that fair value gap target is just above this high at a two to one. So now you can see why I entered on this candle as we stabbed into the fair value gap. And I got out at this candle as we hit that two to one risk to reward ratio. So yeah, this is the model that I trade just about every single day. It happens in at least one asset class just about every single day. And it has a win rate of about 70% from the back testing that I've done over the last two years. And it is personally my favorite model to trade. I hope you guys found this video insightful and I'll continue to bring more content for you guys in the future. Thank you.